Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief. We're playing every mission in the mainline Halo video games in chronological order, discussing our experiences and throwing you a high and tight fastball of lore <laughs> along the way. <laughs> I've watched a lot of baseball lately. Uh, I see. <laughs> if you'd like to play along and have your thoughts spread on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Evolved on Patreon for everything Evolved has to offer. Visit EvolvedHalo.com. This episode, we're debriefing the silent auditorium mission from Halo Infinite. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. Uh, so, um, how about those endless, eh? What, what are the... What? The... Huh? They, they just never end. Do... Yeah. It's, 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 this, it's infinite. <laughs> oh? Are they, are they new, right? What are, what are they? We don't know. Oh. They're, um... They're the Halo fans that endlessly complain about all the games. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're the is. most dangerous thing That's in the exactly Halo universe. At the end, it's just like a mirror. It's like, oh, you were the <laughs> you were the threat to the universe the whole time. They are a bigger the threat than the flood. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Last mission was House of Reckoning. Eshram set up a number of combat trials that Master Chief had to overcome alongside more chest-beating monologues before he could attempt to save Echo 216. Actually, okay, I did a little research. Echo 216 is the pelican. It's not the person. So it's he's trying to save the pilot. So apologies if you've been screaming at your microphone at your speakers the entire time. Yeah, like Echo the 216 mauler. is a I think a that's plane. fine because th that's what pops up every time he speaks. It that's says true. Echo 216. So I and I mean, we're used to, like, Faux Hammer and, you know, Echo 419 and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I've that's my correction. So mark it down. It, it has been corrected. So stop yelling at me. <laughs> J uh, all right. So Jega failed to stop John in a 1v1, which paved the way for an epic showdown between two legendary warriors. Chief Best, the banished war chieftain, but shows him respect in his dying breath. Now, in the silent auditorium, the mystery of the ring's destruction is finally revealed. Cortana left a breadcrumb trail of memories that outlined her final chat with Atriox uh, and plan to sacrifice herself to stop him from taking Zeta Halo. However, Harbinger, the, uh, however, Harbinger, the threat that was unearthed in the wake of Cortana's death, still needs to be stopped. Date of the game is May 28th, 2560. Last mission. And we finally got to deal with Harbinger. We dealt with with big old Eshram. He's dead. Atriox is maybe dead. I guess we'll find out more about this, this mission. So the Banished are in shambles. And now we have this floaty lady squid person to deal with. <laughs> and she talks hella smack. Yeah, she does. But she's not as good as the didact, though, is she? Like she's all right. um maybe not, but she, like she's just no, like she's you know what a what a courageous effort. Right. <laughs> it's wasted. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk she about that towards the end. Smack, I feel yeah. like there's some some things to discuss there. Uh, we do have a cutscene right away. David, do you want to talk about this quick? Yeah, it's nice and quick one. You're in the back of the Pelican. You're dropping off. It's kind of a rough ride. Um, the pilot is like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Like, she doesn't say anything. Um, and he just kind of opens it, and they just kind of pop out. Uh, it's very quick. Like, they're all waiting for us. They're all there. Um, but it's fine. Chief just jumps off. He's ready for his mission. He knows what he's doing. Um, the weapon pops up and kind of says, like, this kind of weird, floaty Cortana memories. Uh, because they they realize, okay, the size auditorium is actually where she locked down Cortana. So this is where Cortana died. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's kind of like a level of significance here uh, on top of the end of the game and fighting the last boss. You're like, okay, this is where Cortana died. This is where John's been trying to get to uh, and understand the whole time, the whole game. Um, so it's kind of cool. It sets up a little bit of mistakes, but it's just a quick intro. You're dropped off and straight away you're in the mission. Yeah, so you get dropped off and I, I feel like, hmm, this is the big resistance point, right? Because... They know you're coming here. Harbinger is in here. 
and the banished are doing everything they can to stop you from getting to her. The remember we talked about it a little while ago, and we've probably covered this, but just to, as a refresher, like the banished, the banished goals align with the harbingers in in the fact that the banished want the ring to be repaired, and the harbinger wants the ring to be well. So they want the ring to be repaired in order to just have a complete ring and be able to use it. Um, but the, the Harbinger wants the ring to be repaired so that she can resurrect the Endless. So so that's that's why the Banished, essentially, Eshram's dead. They don't may or may not know that, but they're still fighting and trying to stop Chief because they still want the ring to be repaired, right? I mean, the Harbinger only wants a specific part of the ring to be repaired, which is the Silent Auditorium, so that she can yeah. open the Endless or whatever the fuck she's yeah. doing. Um <laughs> But the the banished want to essentially like populate the ring as a home world now. Yeah. So it, the um, fact that it's a you know a super weapon is convenient for them. But they're like, we need mm-hmm. somewhere new to live. Yes, exactly. Um, this is one of the I don't know the sloggiest parts of the mission here. This this entry um, spot I like it. I like where you kind of dropped off on the side and you have to feel you feel like you're kind of sneaking up. You're like, it's like a one man ambush, I guess. <laughs> there, There's lots of resistance. There's lots of, uh, you know, there's I think four turrets maybe in total um, and, and lots of banished. Krista, how do you like this initial, uh, this initial encounter? Oh, I like it. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of weapons. Um, if you're like me, you took Eshram's, uh, like, Something of His hope. hammer thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's called Diminisher of Hope. Yeah, yeah. You took that and you're like, oh, shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I killed all of the elites with that because there's yeah. a gold one in an ultra. Let's smush them. Yeah, it's so good. I love that thing. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's I think it's cool. I, I think you now have all the gizmos and gadgets that you want to use if you want to use them. And this is mm-hmm. a great environment to be able to kind of move around and use all of the stuff you've learned and you know, pick up a bunch of different weapons. So I liked it. I like these kind of firefighty areas. Yeah, I don't think we'll dwell on these too much. There's a couple of different, I don't know, like, like you said, firefight areas in the game. But there's so much story that I feel like we need to focus a lot of our <laughs> a lot of our time on that as well. Um, so forgive us if we don't go into too much detail on all of these. Uh, yeah, the auditorium isn't very silent. It's full of exposition. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like overall these firefights are better than some of the other missions where it's story heavy and then there's also firefights. These ones are at least more a little more interesting to me. Um, David, any thoughts on this initial spot, quick? Uh, no, not really. It's, it's, it's a nice intro, nice little battle to begin the mission. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the the main meat of this mission is like this is where you get all the game's story. Essentially, it just happens now in this mission. Yeah. So, yeah, we got a ton in a couple of missions ago. There's a big, there was a big lore drop, and this has a big lore drop as well. Uh, once you get through this area, did you guys notice the Halo Four music? No. Yeah. Uh... So you get through, you you get to the very end, and then there is a door you go through, and then there's like those the Halo Four chants right towards the end. It's really it's really similar. I, I, the I, like do 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 do. No, the like the da 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 da. Oh, okay. There's like, there's like a little bit of that. a callback there in the music, which I there's a I lot of callback into. in the music in this level, though. There's yeah. a ton. Um, and you're, you know, it makes sense. You're in this weird forerunnery place, so I felt like that was appropriate. But that was good for me. Um, Cortana shows up, so Cortana shows up quite a bit here and there, um, throughout the mission, and she appears in the memory, like memory hologram thingamajiggers. So we see that quite a bit here. Um, she shows up right here at the beginning. And what does she say here? Let me find it. <laughs> so there's not much time. Too many variables. I need a... Wait, is that the one? Oh, that's that's right away. Early on. Sorry. Um, Hold on. We'll keep going here. Oh, this is the one. I have seen your future, and I have learned there will be no more sadness, no more anger, no no more envy. So that is from the Cortana letters. In Halo, know what that thing is? 
That's from like a, a Bungie website thing. Uh, it's also um, she says it in Halo Three during the Cortana mission when she's like green and she looks oh, crazy. Okay. Gotcha. So a couple different callbacks there. Yeah, there's a uh, lot of flood callbacks, which is interesting. Yes, there are quite a bit. And then you get into, you eventually get into this hallway where she's facing you. Um, you do have a power seed moment that you need to go through, so do that. And then you have a moment where you're, you, you're walking down this hallway. She's facing you, and it's like she's talking to you. But then she's actually talking to Atriox, which is a fun one. Um, I, I thought that that was a cool moment because you do feel like, oh, crap, she's directly addressing me, but she's actually thinking this is this is after um, Chief has already been, been defeated and she knows she's already been locked down, is my understanding, by a weapon. She's like in this space. She's in the silent auditorium. So so our AI that we have now weapon has locked her down. She's just stuck there and she's expecting Chief or expecting somebody. But Atriox shows up. Um, David, do you want to take us through just this quick little conversation here? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, this is kind of the callback then to what Cortana said to Atriox before uh, in terms of do you understand your consequences, all that kind of stuff. And she's obviously stunned because she's like, oh, John will beat you. And he's like, he didn't when I beat him and crushed his skull. And Th- that's him. a little later on. That that's a little bit later on, is yeah. it? Okay. Okay. So this initial so one did... is just, um, I've been waiting for you to show up. Oh, yes. And the, so that's and where she thought it was John. She turns and it's Aatrox, yeah. and he's just like, mm-hmm. I'm here. Um, I don't remember what he says here. Yeah, I'll, so I guess I'll take it take it through quick. quick. Um, so she says, I've been waiting for you to show up. Um, she says, what's the plan? Take me back to the Infinity for Deletion? Halsey's oh. going to love that. <laughs> so that's when she's like looking at you at the, in, the, in the hallway. And then and then Atriox is there and says the UNSC is gone. Um, and she's surprised that it's Atriox. And then he says, it's time f- to discuss the terms of your surrender. Dun, dun, dun. And then uh, we hear whispers. There's lots of whispers. Like, there's so much stuff in this. <laughs> <mission>. <laughs> they just really dump a ton of story on you here. And de- decent combat, too. So, again, we'll try to cover it all as much as possible. But it's a, it's a lot to, to cover and, and follow through. Um, let's see here. So we keep going, and then we have our hunter fight. Yeah. Yeah, I think right before this, you actually looked down into the to a room, and you saw the hunters tromping around, and now we have the hunter fight. Krista, how did this hunter fight go for you? Oh, fantastic, because I still had Diminisher of Hope. Oh, yes, that helps quite a bit. <laughs> so I went right full? up to them. It wasn't full. I had used it a couple times on the elites. It was yeah. maybe half, so I was able to wound one hunter and kill the other. Mm-hmm. And then in the front of the room, there are some um, skewers, so I skewered the other one. It yeah, was great. I didn't find those skewers until the very end as I was zooming around. I was like, oh, this would have been handy to know. They are so helpful against the hunters. I didn't think they would be when I first picked one up against one mm-hmm. when I started the game, but nah, they they fucking kill them. Mm-hmm. David, how you how, do you have an, any better luck with these hunters? I mean, the, when you kill the first one, the second one gets pissed. Oh yeah, he one. follows oh, yeah, you around. Goes, like he's the he's the worst he hunter. Ragey. Yeah, very raged. Yeah. No, this is grand. It's, it's, it's the same kind of scenario we fought them before. There was a previous mission where two hunters were in a room and you just fought them around the. The pillars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. This grant is fine. So we do get a little soft moment here where after this, um, Weapon asks Chief if he's okay. And he says no. Yeah, that was cool. That's just been in, that, in, yeah. in, in, in gameplay. She's like, mm-hmm. not okay really. Being here, and he's like, not really. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, he like admits John's that getting the field. things aren't going well. So I mean, he 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 knows this is her final resting place. I guess. I mean, he doesn't. Ex- does he expect to find her here? Probably. I not. think so. You think I, so? I don't. I don't know if he really believes that she's dead. Dead. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one to. I guess really know because we don't. He doesn't really. He doesn't say much. Turns out. Um. Did, did you guys find the the weapon cache? The armory. Yeah. 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 So you're kind of wandering says, around. 
And then she, the weapon chimes in and goes, oh, do you need a weapon? Yeah. That's, good. <laughs> That's very good. Okay, so now is, and there's more whispers and stuff like that. Ugh, it's like, it's hard to cover it all. She does whisper at some point, this place will become your home, this place will become your tomb, which is a callback. Um, to what, Halo 3 and hey, Great Mind stuff. So lots of good callbacks. I mean, lots of like, I guess, I'll ask Krista, like, did all of this stuff hit for you as you were playing this mission? Um, like all like the little whispers and the callbacks and like the holograms. Yeah, I was you? like, I'm like super emotional during this this entire mission. It's like yeah. uh, I can't. Um, I think it definitely. I like how they tied in her quotes from the times that she was with Gravemind because I think it's it's important because that was a catalyst for a lot of the stuff that happened. There were two major catalysts with Cortana. One was in Halo Combat Evolved when he put her directly into the ring. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at the end of Halo 2 when she's captured, and then at the beginning of Halo 3. So those were the two big catalysts to what she is doing now, why her rampancy was so bad, you know, blah, 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 blah. So um, I like how they're incorporating that. And, you know, she talks about, oh, I'm, I think I'm going crazy, blah, blah, blah. It's a little later in the mission, but... um. No, I think it's all, it all makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. It this None of this is out of the blue. None of this is out of character for her. Um, it's showing that, you know, while she has been troubled recently and thought mm -hmm. she was doing the right thing, she's realizing she's not and realizing the point of everything. She kind of is like, I, she's like, I lost the plot here, you know? Yeah. I, and that's a little later and we'll talk about that, but. Um, no, I, I think all of this is very well written to make all of the facets of Cortana work because mm -hmm. they're, they're, Cortana's got a lot of shit going on, like a lot. She's got the Halo 5, she's got the Grave Mind, she's got just Cortana. So I think they did a good job tying that all together and making it make sense for her character and her story. Yeah, I think the one the one thing I agree. I think the one thing they missed just to remind the player is that why is Cortana just like sitting here talking to Atriox? You know, they 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 missed a reminder that she she can't go anywhere right now, right now because the weapon has done her job. Um, yeah, and there's, she's there's a waiting there's a for cut scene happen. there that's missing, I think, or something of like seeing the weapon being deployed and actually capturing her. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they were alluding to when she was talking to Master Chief and turned yeah. around and realized it was Atriox. I think it could have been elaborated a little bit more. Yep. They could have hit the nail on the head just slightly more, but that's kind of what that is. She's like, oh, you got me, you know, UNSC, where are you going to take me now? Mm -hmm. And essentially the weapon just set her up for Atriox at that point. Yep, exactly. Uh, so, David, this now is the conversation, this next conversation that we see is the one that you were talking about. Do you want to talk yeah, to that quick? Yeah, this is really cool. This is shows, like, Atriox's plan, his, like, revenge for, like, her destroying Dosak when he didn't join her mm -hmm. or didn't submit. Um, so I love that he just replays the, the conversation to her of, like, you asked me that I understand the consequences, and I asked you the same question, and you said you did. These are your consequences. You know, John is dead, whatever. UNSC is gone. I have the ring. Um, but he's still asking her to, her to surrender the ring to him. Mm -hmm. So she obviously, even in her locked down state, uh, uh, it's clear that like the Atriox and the Banish are still not able to interface with the systems. Like they don't actually have control. They just have like a dominating presence. Mm -hmm. Um which is kind of interesting. So he still needs Cortana to do something, obviously, to unlock. And then I'm not sure if it's here or it's a little bit later, but there's another follow-up where he talks about the ring. Is that? It's, I think it's a little bit later. Yeah, that might be a little later. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave that for now. Um, do you think Atriox knew that the UNSC was, was going to confront Cortana? Like, was he coming to the ring because... He knew like the timing is now to do this, or did he I just get lucky? Yeah. No, I got I got the impression he came for the weapon specifically. He wanted to attack Cortana. I don't know where I got that from. It's either from the something in the game or something, but I got the impression he knew what he was doing. Like he came for the UNSC as well. Okay, and he need, obviously needed a weapon against Cortana. 
So, so it wasn't. Being it wasn't weapon. just. It wasn't just a happy coincidence. Sarah no, I don't think perhaps. so. I think that might be why the attack on the Infinity was timed like it was. Like, mm-hmm. right when the weapon was deployed, he attacks the Infinity, keeps them from, you know, going down to Cortana, and then he does it himself. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the attack happens, and then it's in the dialogue where they're like, oh crap, deploy. Deploy her now. Yeah, they, say, they do so say like, that, yeah. Yeah. So maybe they, that he knew that that was going to happen. I don't know. It's, it's not super clear. Uh, no. Perhaps. I mean, we know Atrax is smart. And he's got a lot going for him, and he's built this giant army. But we don't exactly know how smart he is. We've never, like, seen him infiltrate the UNSC intelligence, right? Like, they've never shown us that. But he also is in a lot of places. He knows a lot of stuff. So perhaps, perhaps that was the case. All right. We continue on. We have another... um, encounter here this next encounter i like into a a kind of a pool because it's like it's like a little bowl and then you gotta um you know clear it out and then you end up on the other side so like again these these encounters are are fun and they do switch it up from the story um but again i think we're going to focus mostly on the story for today's episode um we do hear another whisper she says i I tried to stay hidden but there was no escape he cornered me wrapped me tight and brought me close you guys know what that's from no that's a little bit of a random human weakness isn't it i don't know if it's in there um but what according to halopedia it's it was in the cortana mission from halo 3 but it's it's cortana over a loudspeaker in a pelican that you find or in the crash pelican (laughs) <laughs> I think it's early on in the game. Okay. The pelican you escape on? I think it. Well, uh, it's either that one or let's see. Do you you crash in on a pelican? Uh, you crash in on a banshee. Not on that. It, it, it might be the one that you escape on. Yeah, it might be played on that one. So I do remember that one playing one. So anyway, lots of goodies. Um. Okay. Let's see here. We'll keep going. And then we. Oh, so then we do activate a, a light bridge. And we do get um, another Atriox in Cortana chat here. I think this is the one that you're talking about, David. These holograms yeah, are is... so cool, by the way. Mm-hmm. I love yeah, them. It, I like how awesome. huge they are. And This is pretty much where, like, the reveal here is that Atriox discovers that the ring, the, once again, everybody, if you didn't know, this ring is different. Just because they haven't told you five million times in this game. Um, th- 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 He's like, different ring it's got secrets i know them he seems to know a lot as well as cortana and he's like he's really hell-bent now on unlocking the secrets of the ring Mm -hmm. um which is presumably you know the presence of the endless and he must see a use for them i guess um it seems to be like he obviously it's not like the harbinger gave him this idea it was obviously something he had already when he woke her um, which is interesting. So yeah, he pretty much like surrender it to me now. That's what he yeah. wants. I like how the light bridge goes through their conversation too, so you can kind of like go back yeah. and forth, and yeah, it's super neat. Um, I, he he has the quote here. Uh, I have no need for a failed god. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, uh, and and then shortly after this, the weapon has a the weapon has a realization is like. These memories seem like they're a little more deliberate. So Cortana, in her final moments, had to make the assumption that we were going to come for her and like left all of these things for us to uncover. So we're learning these things on purpose. And these are new things. Previously, um, a lot of the things that we were learning were for the weapons benefit. Chief already knew it. But now this is all new information for both the player and Chief. Yeah. Give me that story. He yeah. does have a cool line where he says, like, your empire is broken. So I wonder, is that like a throwaway line of, you know, the created are gone or whatever? Because mm. that's that's still not answered by the end of this game, which is kind of annoying. No, yeah. there's no answer on, like, what happened to the Guardians or yeah. what's going on. There's yeah. No, like, there's a lot of... kind of here alone? All that kind yeah, of there's a lot of questions left unanswered, which I think we'll cover at the end of this or during the next episode. All right, then we proceed into uh, a big, long combat room. It's got lots of stuff in it. I don't think we'll spend much time on it, um, but it is—it's a good, you know, it's a good fight. It's got—it switches it up, like we said, f- between all of the uh, 
the story missions. So have some fun there, and then you get through that, and then we get our light bulb buddy shows up again. Yes! <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? I killed you twice already. Nah, he's our buddy. You're back? I like that he turns around, but I thought there would be more to it. The fact that he's just in this room, has a couple of lines, and goes away again. I yeah, like, and this is giant room too, by the way. It's like, whoa, yeah. there should be some stuff going on in here, but nope. He just, uh, he chats with you. Essentially, he's saying like, oh, uh, uh, sorry, I was wrong to try to kill you. Harbinger's going to do some things, uh, and I, we should probably stop her together. Yeah. So I'm not going to stop you. He doesn't really help you at all. He just says, hey, no. go do some stuff. He talks about the seal and stuff like that. He at least gives you some explanation of what's going to happen. Yeah, that's true. Well, this is kind of some small dialogue, but like, it's not. He doesn't really explain what's happening. No, it's just like, don't break the seal. Don't let it break the seal. And you're like, okay, I was going to do that anyway. Okay. I, I love seals. <laughs> uh, they're cute. I like their little like hoppy bodies. Yeah, yeah. Love their yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. They they have good music. <laughs> yeah, he opens the door for you, which I guess is helpful. Which probably would have gotten open anyway. But I, I do feel like this giant room was a little bit wasted. I don't totally. know, neat. Maybe you're supposed to walk in and be like, oh shit, another boss battle. And then he's like, oh. I didn't try to shoot him. Could you shoot him? And would he just shrug it off? I don't know. I did try to shoot him either. What? I figured you would yeah. try to shoot him. No, no I love him. loves light bulbs. <laughs> That's true. If he was a Marine. Oh, yeah, so he'd be dead. He'd be dead already. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we say goodbye to Adjutant, finally, our third encounter. We don't get to fight him like uh, that guy that never keeps coming back in Halo 5, the Warden. Um, <laughs> this guy actually likes us now at the end. We go into another room, and this is the room where the skull thing happens. Yes. Which skull is, thing? do you guys remember the skull? How to do the skull? Yeah. You don't kill any I... sentinels. Yeah, how are you supposed oh, to figure that out? I way? don't know, but I just ran through the room and didn't kill anything. Oh, okay. With, when the sentinels came oh. out, I'm like, nope. And you just, so you got it without having to look it up? No, no, I uh, I looked it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I but think that's how she did it. I probably did it the same way, just legged it. Halo Cannon had a good video uh, right away, uh, you know, right when the game came out. And I don't know if he figured that out himself. Or if you got a little nudge from somebody. How would you know? How would you know that? I don't know how you would know. Yeah. Like, oh, there's, there's a door here, and it says there's a skull. Yeah, I, I don't know. I would, I've would i been losing my mind kind of going around this mission. Like, I, I, somewhere. It sounds kind of like a speedrunning thing, but at the same time, if you're speedrunning, you're not going to stop and look at in a, in a random room to see if there's a skull there. So. Yeah. And then would you remember that, oh, I didn't kill a sentinel and that's why it's open anyway so yeah, don't kill sentinels and then so you do this light bridge and the room on the other side that door will open i guess i guess you get to see the light bridge over there so maybe that's a hint that that door can open but what do i need to do to activate it i don't know i, don't know I think people just went into the code and looked it up maybe maybe that's what happened um all right so we do that get the skull it's the bandana skull it's an important skull Oh, it's a it's great skull. One you got to get. Get it. Get so it. definitely do it. And then uh, we will continue on. Let's see here. Oh, and we have another memory to deal with. Wait, this big giant room, by the way. These rooms are so cool now. Like, lots of forerunnery stuff. All forerunner goodness here. Um, And then we get to... Let's see here. We hear... Uh, oh, we hear Atriox's voice. It's just his voice. He says, your great plan ended at the hands of those who made you. Um, and then he says again, reflect on your choices, Cortana. Understand the consequences. I love how he, like, she taunts him, and then he just taunts her right back. Yeah. That's why I love it. Yeah. So good. And then we get to a moment where we're going up a elevator, and we have lots of Cortana talking to herself. And this is all new information, more or less her just deciding, like, or her realizing, oh, shit, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And this is kind of all what we, like, as a player, these are all the things that we more or less knew. Like, what is she doing? Right? Like, why is she doing all this stuff? And she thought she was taking this tyrannical approach 
to save everybody, but not realizing that that um, it, w it wasn't the correct the correct way. But why wasn't it the correct way? Was it only the not the correct way because she got caught, and that there that she was uh, potentially going to be usurped by the banished, or I That's don't know. That's what I thought. I, th yeah. I think it was it was the fact that like she thought she had infinite power. She destroyed a planet and thought that was that. And then it came back to haunt her, like almost, let's just say, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then she, it, it, I got the impression it's like she's only sorry because she got caught, because she's yeah got trapped in this situation. Where she was forced to realize, okay, a bigger enemy, a smarter being than me, took me down. You know? She was forced to self reflect, like yeah. stop and think about what she's doing. Right. Which is weird in like ai terms because she's like thinking a billion times a minute right yeah so yeah. but but she for for whatever reason didn't think that this was going to be the outcome and atriox got her so, so now she's like plan oh do i surrender to atriox or do i kind of revert back to who i was before and help humanity so I'll read her, her quick thinking here, because I do think it's interesting. Um, she says, how could it have been so stupid? Halsey made a copy. It was the only way. Uh, there's not much time. If Atriox takes control, he has the ring, a weapon pointed at the universe, and nothing left to lose. My fault, my stupid fault. And this is like you're on the, the elevator, and you're like, she's like kind of coming at you at all different angles, her, her uh, hologram. And so you're just kind of like spinning around, trying to keep her in frame, which I think is kind of neat. Um, I was looking at her butt a little bit here and there, too. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of nice. Uh, my fault. My stupid fault. Not much time. Will this work? There's, uh, She says, there's a moment. John will make it work. He needs help. Of course. Was this her plan all along, Halsey? Or is it mine? It doesn't matter now. Nothing else matters. This has to work. He can't do it on his own. He needs me. He needs her. And then the elevator stops, and then you look at, at the weapon. You're like, oh, I need this one. I need this AI. And that's obviously why the weapon didn't automatically delete herself. Yes, exactly. So so that was the moment that Cortana realized, hey, i got to stop the deletion. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then I like how this next part, so you're like, okay, all right, cool realization. And then the weapon's standing there at the console, and you go to grab her, and she kind of smiles. And then she turns around and is like, oh, more story. <laughs> Here yep. you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, David, do you want to do this one? Yes. So uh, Aatrox is like, it's time to make your decision. And she goes, I have made my decision. Thank you, Aatrox. You helped me. You really did. Would you humor me? And then she says the line we've heard a bunch of times. If you knew you were going to die, would you do anything different? Mm -hmm. And he says, no. And she's like, perfect. Thank you very much. And then he starts freaking out, going, what are you doing? And she just blows up the ring. And then it's the reveal of, like, it was her that did, um, mm -hmm. that set off the ring. And obviously, probably slip, slip spaced it, wherever, whatever it went. Do you think her asking that question to Atriox was a measure of his morality? That's what I'm guessing so. Oh, uh, that's a good question. I, I couldn't figure that out. That's a good question. I, I thought it, I thought it was her kind of measuring him and seeing, like, what kind of person he is. Because a question like, if you knew how you were going to die, how would you live your life differently? I feel like someone who, you know, has... Re obviously, people have regrets. People mm -hmm. have, you know, they, they can reflect on what they've done and, you know, think of how they could do it better. But obviously, Atriox is not that kind of person, which is why he is so dangerous and so powerful. Mm -hmm. so uh, that's what I thought I thought it was her last like measure of her enemy as yeah. a way like who he is who she who she's like saving the universe for from or whatever I mean because I mean that's a good question how would you answer that if you knew how you were going to die then I probably would change some things right yeah I, I, I at least think about it for like five minutes <laughs> Atrex right. was like nothing Yep, exactly. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm perfect. This is I've done everything for correctly or whatever. 
yeah. No, that's interesting. I think that puts it in perspective. All right. So the weapon, um, this is the realization that, oh, you know, this is also interesting. I, I think we kind of figured this out, perhaps, maybe? Originally, when we were, uh, w we saw Halo Infinite, before we even played the game, we saw this big hole, right? Like 343 shared this with us, and there was lots of speculation as to what happened. And uh, there was a big speculation that maybe the Infinity rammed into the, the ring and created this giant explosion. Um, I guess up until this point, we didn't really know, right? Like, had did you think that this is what had happened, David? Like, did you think... No, Cortana I wasn't was sure. That blew it up? No, no, I, I had no real idea what was going on, to be honest. Why the ring exploded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess this is a this is the reveal, right? It's like okay, well, this is destroyed by Cortana to another like asset um, denial. Okay, if I can't have it, you can't have it either. That's just standard Halo practice. Standard like. Halo, right? Exactly. So we have a little chat here, um, and then we start moving into Harbinger Land. So now that we've kind of figured out all that backstory, finally, I I do we. I don't know. Do we need to know all that information to fight the Harbinger? I guess we don't, but it's the end of the game, so we need to, <laughs> to know what happened with Atriox and Cortana. But regardless, we were still here to stop the Harbinger, so having all that knowledge is handy. Um, but also, from a player standpoint, we could have figured that out later, perhaps. But I don't. I, I do enjoy how they did. It. I'm just thinking of like Chief going through this. Like he's here to stop the Harbinger. Now we're finally going to stop the Harbinger. But we got all this nice information. Um, also, I mean, what would they have filled the mission with if not for explanation <laughs> right. of what happened? Yeah, exactly. Because they don't really. The Harbinger is literally just a catalyst to explain the Endless a little bit and an mm -hmm. en an extra enemy to have. The yeah. Harbinger isn't like a proper like, fleshed-out character, right? So she's just yeah. like, hi, I'm here to introduce a new race, a new species for the next game. Mm -hmm. You know, wow, I'm super scary, and I'm a new new thing, and, you know, but realistically, you're probably more focused on Cortana, Atriox, the Banished, Eshram. Yeah. Very true. Right before you go into this final room, did you guys, I mean, the, the rooms are gorgeous, and they have, oh. like, a gold sheen now, and did you notice these four statues right before you go into the door? They almost look like knights, and then, like, knights holding swords. Uh, it's super rad. Is this a callback to any previous games, these knight dudes? I didn't notice at all. Not that I can think of. It's it's very, like, the architecture is very Halo 3, though. It's Halo 3 arc mm -hmm. architecture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. which would make sense because the Ark had different architecture because of when it was built, and this ring was built differently as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why it's not like the super blue, silvery, all over the place. Because I keep saying hey, the ring's different. This ring what? is different. Yeah, this ring is different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did you guys know? You did you guys know this ring is different? Uh, I heard about I guess that. So. I yeah. Was, yeah. I had an inkling, you know, I was going I think they it was really subtle, but they alluded that this <laughs> ring is definitely different. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokes. So now we go down, we put weapon in this console, and she figures out what the silent auditorium is. Oh, by the way, is the silent is are things silent because they were like destroyed? Or they were like no longer like because there was a silent cartographer and the silent, like, I feel like they're drawing a, a Is connection Is it supposed there. to be because they're secret? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> they should just call them the secret auditorium. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's too obvious that it's a secret. <laughs> exactly. The hidden auditorium? Hmm. So we figure out what the silent auditorium is. The silent auditorium is the place where the forerunners decided to... You know, it's like a court stick room. all of the all of the endless into the silexes essentially 
Um, and this is where all the things happened. You see the Silexes in the background, which I think is cool and ominous. You don't see... Well, I guess we don't really know what Endless are until the very, very end of the game. But you don't see Endless Silexes. You see Silexes from Jirolane and, and, you know, Kigyar and um, Grunts and all that sort of stuff. I'm forgetting that. What are they? Unga, Ungui? So you Ungui, see yeah. all the all the other races, but you don't see the race that we're supposedly trying to stop from being unearthed and unfrozen. Um, and then we have a little conversation with the Harbinger. David, what does, is this even worth talking about right here? She just kind of pops up and she yells at you and then she starts something. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty typical much, I mean, like, woman behavior. <laughs> there's a bit of a quote, yeah. There's a bit of a cut scene where, like, the weapon is explaining things and saying what it is and what happens, and then she kind of chimes in, um, with her up with her angry rage, and then the kind of boss battle starts. But like, mm-hmm. the weapon is explaining to you the whole time that like, she it's like a signal. It's really old. She's trying to communicate with something. Yeah, you don't right. really know what's going on, and it's talking about like transmission towers. And stuff like that. So Cortana, or sorry, the weapon is like, I'm tracking it before you even ask anything. Um, and that's kind of it then. You kind of just fight her in different phases. Yeah, they, th- this last, I like this, uh, I don't know, I guess I should save this, but I'll mention it here. Um, I, I like this boss battle better than the Halo 5 ending boss battle stuff. But also, like, there's just a lot going on. Like, this whole mission, they just shove a ton of story at you, and it's hard to absorb. Even replaying it and reading it and all that stuff, it's like, what is happening? There's a lot going on here. Um, and I feel like it's a, almost a little bit too much. If you're just if you're playing this mission just to shoot stuff and win the battle, it's, it's enjoyable enough. But as a Halo, like, a lore person, there's a lot here, and it's, it's hard to make sense of it all. So uh, the Harbinger says, um, she's all pissed off, and she says, to cover their sins, we stood silent, unable to speak as they passed judgment. Um, we could not defend ourselves. We could not reason with them. And then that's when Weapon says, the, there's something sending a signal. Before you ask, I'm already tracking it. So they just she just drops that little nugget over there. Like, oh, okay. Um, and then she says, uh, hear, hear this, Forerunners. Your auditorium has fallen. The Endless found your sins undone. Today we return. And then she starts the boss battle. <laughs> She does something, and then you have to start fighting her. And the boss battle is her popping up, her like being protected in this, I don't know, gold, golden information shield, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's her breaking the seal. Yes, she's breaking the seal. Um, and then you fight a bunch of waves, and then the seal drops, and then you go shoot her in the face a little bit and then she goes back in the middle and then you fight some more waves of stuff rinse and repeat yep um enjoyable enough i think it's a, a cool arena um and it's difficult enough david i know you haven't tried it on legendary yet um but it's it feels like it would be a giant pain in the dick on legendary uh and yeah heroic it is challenging enough krista how'd you how'd you make out in the in the, boss the first two waves super easy the last wave ugh, that fucking chieftain fucking is an chieftain. asshole yeah, right. like i feel like he teleports behind me he's so quick he can jump it, so far yeah he and is. uh i was kind of experimenting with it a little bit i'm pretty sure he spawns at whatever door you're closest to oh really yeah i don't he's i Every, at least that's what I felt like. Uh, I was like trying different doors and stuff like that, and he always seemed to be in a door very close to me. I'm like, you fucking asshole! <laughs> what the fuck? Well, the so, room. Is, I feel like the room is well designed because there's stuff to hide behind, but not not enough. Like there's not enough um, uh, real estate to hide behind. You like, you always have to move. Like you can hide for a little bit, but then you got to move, and people are just constantly coming towards you. So, dude, and everyone has a fucking shock rifle. Why does yeah. everyone have? One? <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. They're like sniping you from across the fucking arena when you're trying to run from the chieftain. Yeah. It's, Ugh. it's rough, man. It can get Yeah, it is. It is a little rough. You definitely you have to just focus on the ads and get everything that has a shock rifle out of there because they will kill you when you're trying to run away from that chieftain. Yep. If you just try sitting there and sniping for a little bit, you're going to get hit in the ear and destroyed. 
I found that, oh God, what is it called? It's the, like, Forerunner rocket equivalent. Cinder shot? Yeah, mm-hmm. the cinder shot works really well, because you can yep. stand by one oh, of the doors that, yeah. and just kill them all as they come out. David, any any other thoughts on this? Is it it's a, a chieftain? Yeah, it's a good enough battle. I like the arena. Like you said, it's, it's you have some kind of cover, um, but it's not perfect. There's plenty of weapons in here and stuff like that. And her, she's she, she's the most annoying, especially when she teleports when you get her, yeah, when you get her down near the end. And she can and almost one shot you. Yeah, she, she, she can all, practically one shot you. Yeah. yeah. I found her quite easy. The only thing that I had issues with were those um tracking like shock grenade things that oh, she summons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when she was close to me, I was just like sidestepping her like a crazy person. It wasn't that I didn't find it very difficult. Um, but it was just when she got away from you and started those tracking fucking grenade things that were super annoying. Yeah. They reminded me of Warden Eternal's yeah. big black hole thing. Yep. Those <laughs> things suck. So yeah, do some dancing, do some running around, shoot some stuff, defeat her. I'll quickly read what Weapon says. So like, again, there's lots going on. Weapon is talking to you in your ear this whole time about like what's actually happening while you're fighting. She says um, she's trying to open a connection between here and somewhere else on the ring. And John says, where? She says, uh, you deal with her and I'll find out. And then she says, there, I've inter- intercepted the carrier wave from this trans uh, this transmitter. She says she switched transmitters, rerouting the power through that one. This isn't good. The connection is sentient. Mm, interesting. Uh, it's searching for something. Um and then she says, okay, next one's down. It's switching again. I found... So, like, she's, like, just chirping about all this stuff that's going on in the background. Meanwhile, you're just running around trying to survive. Um, and it then... seems to me like every single time, you know, you defeat the Harbinger and she starts again, it's an entirely new, like, encrypted whatever mm-hmm. that she's going out. And then the weapon has to completely stop what she's doing on the previous one and work on the new one. Yeah, so it's almost like the Harbinger and the Weapon are kind of like cyberspace battling while you're battling totally. in real life. Yeah. So, and we yes. got a little sense of that earlier from the, um, was it the signal mission where you when we were going down to the four beacons and there was some kind of cyberspace fights happening in there too, so. And Chief tried to off the Weapon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just super well, casually, like, oh, okay, bye. Yeah. She just said something really interesting in the middle of it that, like, something else is here helping yeah. me. Right. I'm like, oh, what's this? Right. And it's it's just, medicine bias. It's just mentioned. No. I think it might but be I'll... offensive bias. <gasps> Spoilers. Or, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I like it was a cartoon. Well, it's, it's a bias. We'll talk about that we we want to get a bias yeah. in here. Come yeah. on, guys. Uh, okay, so let's do the, the final cut scene here. Well, I guess this is a big juicy one, but what, what happens when you defeat her, David? What, what happens? So she falls down. And <laughs> she's she's kind of like... <laughs> she falls I get down. The impression she's like... I get the impression she's leaving a recording. She's not actually talking to John. So she says, you have what you need. Tell them I am sorry it took so long. Yeah. So like... She's Maybe to where that signal's going. Yeah, wherever she's doing, she's communicating. Because John's like, who's she talking to? Weapon's like, I don't know. The signal's old, like really old. Um, She's like, my time has ended. Yours too. They will make sure. And then she just dies for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> she expires. I mean, you, 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 you kind of clobbered her. So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And then she says, the Endless will return. Not in this game. (laughs) The Endless will return in Halo (laughs) Infinite 2! That's it. And the weapon says, I couldn't decrypt it in time. She says, okay, you'll figure something out. Then he calls her an evac. um, And then Cortana shows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I was like, oh my god. Um, So you get like a, a memory part where she's like, you know, they'll pair you with another AI. Maybe even a Cortana model if Halsey lets them. Uh, which is obviously a famous line from Halo 4. She's talking about being replaced. And she says, it won't be me, You'll know, but you'll know that, right? And then you turn around and Cortana's there. And she says, like, she's still talking, it doesn't matter. And then the weapon goes, it's just another echo. And she goes, she's right, it's just another echo, John. And then I was like, oh shit! But then, like, she immediately, like, dismisses it of, like, oh, I just thought, 
that's something she would say. Yeah. Sorry, I'm messing with you. And uh, so it is just a, a memory recording, more or less, uh, of Cortana, and it's it's pretty. Th- this is this is this. These are feels. You know what I mean? These mm-hmm. are real yeah. feels going on right now. It's like, damn it, um, Halo Four all over again. Come yeah. on, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> and she's like normal looking Cortana, not like Halo Five Cortana. And she pretty much just explains, you know, I only had a few milliseconds to make this plan. I hope it works. Uh, obviously, she kind of explains. I tried to do this by myself. I was so wrong. I realized the whole point of it was that we were supposed to be a team. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do this by myself. And I made a mess of it, essentially. Um, It's kind of like, okay. Perfect. Yeah. It's it's nice. It's it's nice to have her acknowledge this. um, Because, like, she had to go. The stuff she had done is, like, irredeemable. She couldn't just become good. And so, I guess she kind of explains. That's that's kind of what she says. She just admits her faults and looking for her to make amends she blows up the ring essentially and sets you up um mm. but it's cool yeah i mean i don't know if this is the conversation for <clears throat> the recap or not but but it's top of mind so cortana was gonna die at halo 4 but she chose not to more or less right but then she so she she saved herself and then became this this, you know, emperor, empress. Well, she just, she got lucky. She fell into the domain and was able to hack her way in. Right. But then she made the decision to, to take on the, the mantle of responsibility, thinking that that's what she should have done. <clears throat> Could she have made the alternate decision where it's like, oh, I'm just going to go back to being your partner AI after I've saved myself? Like, was that even an option for her? You know I mean? see why not. You know, once you access the domain, I mean, she basically has knowledge of everything that's right. basically ever happened. So and she can live forever. She knows she can live forever now. Yeah. So. So I don't. Know I mean, it's almost it's kind of like much. absolute power co- corrupts absolutely. Like an right. AI is not yeah. supposed to have access to the domain, and that was kind of talked about in Halo Five or in that um. Ugh, that comic that explains how she got into the domain. Oh yeah, so, uh, human it, weakness is that? Yeah, that no, it's uh, it's another one. It's it's in Slip Space, like Tales from Slip Space. Yeah, it's one yeah. of the last ones. Yep, I know what you're talking about. But you know, they talk about how AIs aren't supposed to get in, especially sentient AIs are not supposed to have access to the domain for mm-hmm. a reason, because it's. It's too much. I mean, you can easily get very power hungry off of that. So, so maybe when she talks about her mistakes and realizing that she screwed up, is like she still could have been in the domain and lived forever, but she didn't have to take her position as empress of the galaxy. She could have just been hanging out, I guess. <laughs> and like, I don't know. Like when you get that kind of information and yeah, power, like what what do you do? Um, right. Yeah, I don't know how they would have. What, what other decision she would have made she probably could have made a different decision but it, it also makes sense like oh i'm just gonna i'm just gonna oversee everything like it's I'm, i have infinite power i live forever i'm just gonna make sure everybody survives but you have to listen to me yeah i don't know it's a tough one but at the end of the day she was defeated she's no longer and she's essentially passed the mantle of being chief's partner off onto her copy now She's... Yeah, she says, I, I, learned, I need you guys to learn from my mistakes. And she says, I chose well, and now it's up. She's like, I really did, and now it's up to you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is nice. And then yeah. she fades. Yeah. Good old good old weapon now. Now it's chief yeah. and weapon. And now, the for some reason, the room is falling apart. I don't know why, but it it's is. It's waiting for the conversation to finish. It's being polite about <laughs> Is it because the seal was unbroken and that did something? That could be. Yeah. So, essentially, they scramble around trying to figure out what to do. And then the a portal opens and John is like, did you do that? And she's like, would it help if I said yes? He said, probably. We're going to do it anyway. We don't even know where it's going to go. And he says, do you have any options? She says, no. She's like, it's a really bad idea. And she jumps through. And then Chief pops out uh, somewhere else on the ring. Actually, on the other side of it. Yeah, because you see the, see the... Part, Yeah, cool. right. So the whole time we were like, we were right next to the broken part, right? Yeah, that yeah. was the point, yeah. yeah. Like right on the edge. 
we were we, see we, we were on like the islands were like broken. I mean, you were on just a broken part of the ring. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Which is uh pretty cool. Um, then like Echo Two Sixteen pops up. Go, oh my god, your beacon popped up. I'm on the way. And where did you go? And then the weapon chimes in. Actually, it's more like when are we? Because we lost three days. Uh, which I f- they made it sound like it was significant, but nothing really comes of it. I feel like we're um, gonna find out more about that. Yeah, I I don't know why there's a time gap. So yeah, maybe, maybe there's something else going on. But we um, also got to remember that slip space is kind of bending time and reality as well. So it was obviously a slip space portal of some kind that they went through. Yeah. So I and we know a little bit about like time and stuff like that from the Halo. What is it? First Strike. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there was kind of some time dilation and slip space stuff in there. If you haven't read it, I would. I think it's going to be significant here pretty soon. Yep. So, um, yeah, we kind of know that there's like some weird time shit going on. So there's what those crystals are for on a crystal that's involved. The slip space we... crystals. Yeah. yeah. And then that's how Atriax got back. Right. Wasn't there a slip space crystal? And yes. yeah, that was, that was the whole thing with reach. And... Yep. Yeah. Shadows of Reach, where he came back in, mm-hmm. and how we got back from the arc so fast because yep. it's so far away. Right. Um. Yeah. So like, there's a small bit of dialogue where they're like, kind of wrapping, summing up the story. Like both, you know, the banished and the Harbinger were looking for something that was never found. Why would the Forerunners bury something and throw away the key? Does it make you scared? He says no to you, and she's like, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> then like the pilot chimes in. Is anyone ask me what I think? And nobody says anything, and he goes, I guess not. And then, <laughs> which is kind of a weird dialogue, and then he kind of just spins the plane around, and Chief jumps on. And then... R- real quick, um, they do show, because the, they've we've had these stone rings on the yeah. Halo the yeah. whole time, and apparently they weren't put there by the Forerunners. So I feel like these there's something is going to come of these rings. And How many sh- rings were there in Both. this cutscene? Oh, there were seven. Oh. There, I can count seven. So I have it paused right here. Yeah. One, and then two, the last three. one, the last one is broken. Well, the fourth one, one of them has is, yeah. a hole in it, like this one, like Zeta. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one. Yeah, the last one is busted. So yeah, four. Broken. It would make sense for four and seven to be busted because four was destroyed. Oh, but why would the stone rings replicate that? Which is interesting. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Maybe it's just symbolism or something like that, but it is interesting that it lines up because technically four is gone, right? Four is gone forever. Now there's installation eight that replaced four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And alpha. So wait a minute. Alpha is the first one, first firing, right? Yeah. It's it's... installation four. And that's the one that's busted. I don't know. Somebody probably has figured out what this image means, but there are seven. So there's got to be a tie in to, to come. Uh, but yep. yeah, the the pilot was just circling around the ring, apparently, waiting for you to pop up for three days, and then he just happened to be nearby. <laughs> yeah, he gets there pretty quick. Right. And then there you jump on, then we have probably a contentious conversation that happens where you get the pilot's name reveal. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's here, and not way sooner in the game, but it's here. Uh, and then he flips it, so he's uh, Fernando Esparza, uh, which is like nice moment. Yeah, we we can our name. We're friends now. And then she flips. He flips the question on, "What do I call you?" And she's like, "What do you mean?" It's like you get to pick your name. So John says, and, she, and then she says, "I think I have one. Do you think it'd be okay?" And he says, "Yeah, you can pick your own name." And she's, and then it kind of just ends that kind of way. They're all smiling and happy, mm-hmm. uh, and then they fly off. I do oh. like how um, Esparza is like, once Chief gets on the Pelican, he's like, yeah, I'm part of the crew now. Here's yeah. a weapon. Yeah. What are we doing next? Like, he's completely flipped. And now he's like, hey, he's like, let's go. I'm ready to do crazy he's shit with Chief. Shit up. Yeah, right. <laughs> All about it. So, he gives him a cause... hug. It's good. Yeah, they oh my gosh, the I love the that. I love the hug. The it, like, Chief almost like hugs him back, but uh, doesn't. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not Ooh. happy about the name. About his name? Her no, name. about oh. if the weapon well, has... Well, she doesn't officially take it. Which is weird that they that they leave it open like that. I think, I don't know if Tree for Tree are kind of sending out feelers to see what people think. 
Because obviously yeah. the assumption is that she takes the name Cortana, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't think she 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 should. No. I like that she's like her own person in this. Like she's different. She's not Cortana. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a slightly off little little wacky quirky person. So I, I well, wish she had her own name. Wasn't the name Cortana of derivative it. of another name? Yeah, it's from Cortana. that poem with Roland and all that sort of stuff. I yeah, think. yeah, isn't it? Isn't it not der- it, Cortana? It's like something close to mm-hmm. Cortana. Let me look it up. Yeah, and so then the, the thought is that the speculation was that her name was going to be Joy because there was a another character, Roland and Cortana, and Joy was another of the characters. Oh. Or like Joyous, I think was what the name was. So we'll see what they do. It's TBD. Likely she'll yeah. just be Cortana. But yeah, I was kind of hoping like I don't know if she takes a variation on the name. Maybe I, I think having the actual name is going to get confusing. Especially when, like, if they take her out into the wider world and, and people are looking for Cortana, that's obviously going to be a problem. I mean, they have Didact and Ur, you know, Ur Didact. <laughs> and, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Iso Didact. So they've already done yeah. this before. <laughs> I know, I know. But then, shit. Yeah. And, and, and that's crazy confusing. And that's, mm-hmm. like, the an offshoot character and not, like, one of the main characters. But, um, hmm. I don't know. And then the game continues. You can just play on. Yep, yep. Then you can just play on. That's right. And then, but we do have the legendary ending before. Oh yes, yes, yes. Which I actually haven't seen yet. Oh, is now the time? I might have to because I haven't seen <clears throat> it. Or, uh, have, have you guys both seen it? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> now we're gonna do the reveal on air. <clears throat> oh, oh my gosh, we should so. listen to it, David. Oh, I'll pull it up on mine as well. It's great. Let me sit up. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! There it is. Sorry, I forgot you didn't watch that yet, so I I kind of spoiled that for you a bit. But there it is. Well, it's about time they did something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Finally, they talk about one of the biases in an actual cutscene and not in random text. In an actual game. Yeah. Oh man, interesting. So this conversation was happening went back when they were containing them, right before they contained them, I guess. But then there's, we're there's... seeing Atriox get to the Silexes, and he essentially is releasing them, I believe. Yeah, there's a huge debate. So there's I've, I, I, read, I read a bit about this just to prep for this episode. I don't know if we want to go through it now or on the recap, but, you know, there's there's a lot. One, there's a huge discrepancy in the community whether... Atriox has gone back in time, or Atriox mm-hmm. is just where those Silexes are being held. Now, mm-hmm. for me, I always interpreted it as the conversation is happening at a different time than when yes. Atriox yeah. is. Yeah. Halo does that all the time in their end cutscenes. So, yeah. Um, the like Grand it. Edict is very interesting. He mentions engineers, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's like there's a bunch of obviously a bunch of theories about what the Endless are. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, so the let's sim- save some of that for the end for the next okay, episode okay awesome so I, will, I will go there. through the theories yeah I think that'll be a fun conversation so um, yeah we're, we're running along any other thoughts on this mission specifically um, Harbinger so we learned what happened with Cortana Cortana passed the baton we defeated Harbinger kind of the end is Atriox is still alive. That's also a reveal. I never thought he was dead the whole time anyway. Nobody um, I don't think anyone did. did. I mean. They couldn't have just killed, like brought him in and then killed him off off screen. Like, come on. No. No. He's so, so freaking cool. And he's we'll going to be such a good rival to Master Chief. Yeah. And he'll be less of the. Mm, he'll be concerned about Chief, but less focused on him, I think. Like, Eshram was just focused on Chief. He's like, all right, this is my guy. Yeah, well, Eshram saw his end, saw his way out. Yeah. So. So. Well, and Atriox is more cold and calculated, while Eshram was more battle hardened and ready Mm -hmm. to go and fight. Atriox has already beaten Chief before, so he's probably not overly intimidated by him. Yeah, which is obviously what's going to be super cool when they ever when they face off again. Clash Mm -hmm. the rematch. Yeah. 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 Lots of good stuff to come. Okay, well, why don't we end it there? Um, give me a rating, Krista. Ten. Yeah? 
I love this mission. Dang, right up there with the the best of the best, huh? Yeah, maybe not, but <laughs> it's David? probably more of a nine. But oh my gosh, I love this mission so much. It's definitely the best mission within this game. You think so? Yeah. You don't. Story wise, no, well, like, the story wise is really high, but like gameplay is really simple. Yeah, I don't know. This the, the boss fight's good. I mean, pretty good at the end. I'm, I'm alright with that. I mean, I feel like the encounters in between the story are are better than they've been. I don't know. Give me a number, David. Come on. Eight. Eight. Uh, story is really good. Mm, gameplay. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go up there with you. Nine. I'll go you at nine, Krista. Hell yeah. Oh my god. We're up there. All right. We talked about the skull. There are no audio logs. Let's do some community. We'll close her out. And we'll have a fun conversation for the recap. Um, Krista, do you have anything up by any chance? Yes, for the community question? Yeah. Yes, I do. Do it. All right. Chief and the weapon were missing for three days. What did? Where did they go? GIF or picture answers only. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so... um. There's a guy, and he's doing a symbol with his hands that looks kind of like scissoring. Um, here's another one where it's a guy in some kind of sex chamber, and he has a dildo on a stick. Um, here's another shot of the sex chamber. Um, here is a shot. It is the Titanic where the, you know, I, I feel like I'm on top of the world kind of kind of pose. Mm-hmm. And it's the weapon and um, Master Chief from the Halo TV show without his helmet. You mean McKee? <laughs> McKee? Is, is that McKee? Who's McKee? Uh, She's the human Covenant person. From the show. From the show. I thought it was McKee. I, have to, I don't have it up on. No, no. It's the oh, weapon. It's the weapon. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'm a little behind on the Halo TV show. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, here's another one, and it looks kind of like one of those old, like, uh, fun houses. Um, it's got, like, a devil face you walk through. There's a guy dancing outside, and it says, Girls, Panties, Inferno Room, Girls, oh, Girls. That's from, um, uh, Beetlejuice. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, shit. It's been yeah. a while since I watched that one. Okay, here's another one. It's the scene from the Halo TV show where he is, where Chief is naked and he's showing off his fucking Booty. cheeked up ass. Um, his big buns and Cortana's taking, uh, not Cortana, the weapon is taking a picture of it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now we have some text. Um, Mr. Chicken says, I'll be lame with a serious answer. They're likely in stasis to protect them from... The emergence of the endless and not what? a picture invalid. Not a picture. Oh, okay, we're only doing pictures. Yep. All right. So Jedi Spartan says, uh, since it's in the Discord, this about sums it up, and it's Chief saying you don't want to know. Mm -hmm. Um, the pesky perv says, "Oh God, it's it's a fucking huge <laughs> gif where a guy walks into a porta potty and there's like a meeting going on and." Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's about it. Okay, yeah, thank you for making sure. me explain gifts. <laughs> yeah, I gave out to him earlier when I saw this. So I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, Colin Perkins, the admin, June 28th at 5.16pm. Chief and the Weapon are missing three days. Where do they go? Gift and Patreons only. Question mission, debrief, Halo, Infinite, Southern Auditorium episode. So, we got a couple. So, Tim links to the Ace Ventura being born out of a rhino. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yep. um, Luke has something that looks familiar, but I don't recognize it. What is this? I'm clicking it over and over. That's a penis. No, it's Facebook. <laughs> oh, it's a disco. It's a disco from Halo Reach. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Then we have Patrick says the uh, picture of uh, Monkey Island, uh, the secret of Monkey Island. Storm <laughs> has the Raptors on motorbikes alongside um, Chris, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Chris Bratt, um, yeah. Chris Bratt. Uh, Richard has the train from South Park smashing into the tunnel. It's obviously something oh, else. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Lucas has a gift. It's from of Family Guy. 
I think. Is, is that Family Guy? I yeah. thought that was South Park. Okay. Uh, Lucas has someone in VR clearly miming sex. <laughs> Having VR sex with a dummy. <laughs> um, and then, let me scroll down. Ian has a gif, which is like Jesus rising from the grave. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, coming out of a Three cave. days. Three days. Oh, nice. Um, Chris gives us Tez Mosby just like look looking really bored at a strip joint from How I Met Your Mother. Justin then has, has Vegas Baby from um, The Hangover, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. This is, oh, wait, I haven't said it yet. This is the penultimate episode. Oh, my God. Uh, Gotta say penultimate when you can. Penultimate. Yep. In the next episode, we'll be recapping. So that will do it for our debriefing of Silent Auditorium Mission from Halo Infinite. On the next episode, we'll be recapping our time with Halo Infinite so far. Send us your thoughts at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet, Podcast Evolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Evolved on Patreon for everything Evolved has to offer. Visit EvolvedHalo.com. Until next time. Evolved. Evolved. Evolved.